All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Plant-Based Skinny Hall. This is Michelle Crosmer, registered dietitian here with Dr. Hashmi. And the question that we're going to discuss today is what should people know about magnesium and kidney disease? And what about magnesium supplements? All right, Michelle. So this is a, a really good question because when it comes to kidney disease, magnesium is one of those items that we don't actually talk much about. And I think we really should. And part of that is, is because when you look at data, specifically when you start to look at population-based studies, what they show is that higher levels of magnesium are linked to better survival, both in CKD and in dialysis going on. But like most things in life, there's a sweet spot. So the sweet spot, what we call a U-shaped curve or a J-shaped curve means that if you go too low magnesium, your mortality goes up. If you go too high magnesium, your mortality goes up. And we'll talk about that in another topic in terms of all of the things with hyper hypo magnesium. But today's topic is really focusing on what you need to know. So in terms of the main function that you should be concerned about with magnesium is magnesium essentially blocks the calcification effects of calcium and phosphorus. So remember, calcium and phosphorus, they combine together and then they precipitate or go and line all your blood vessels and your blood vessels harden. Well, one of the things along with things like vitamin K2 is good old magnesium. Magnesium will actually block this effect going on. In fact, there's a very well double-blind placebo-controlled trial in which they had 36 patients, CKD3 and CKD4. This was reported in Kidney International Reports in 2017. And what they were basically able to test for was whether or not there would be any kind of improvement in essentially the propensity to get calcification. So what they were trying to find out is if they gave magnesium supplements, specifically 360 milligrams or 720 milligrams of mag hydroxide, slow release mag going on, would it help to reduce some of those markers of calcification going on? And the answer was yes. Not only was the answer yes, but in those uh, patients, both the 360 milligram dose and the 720 milligram dose was actually safe and well tolerated. Most of the time, you know, if you're running around 400 milligrams of mag a day, that's safe. But in kidney disease, the, the X factor is we don't know how your kidney is going to clear because depending on the part of your kidney that's mm -hmm. scarred, it will affect how well the mag gets reabsorbed or not. So in this particular case, what you want to understand is, is the sweet spot for mag is really based on your blood test. So what do I mean by that? So there's a study that was published recently where they were looking at the Cleveland Clinic CKD registry. They had 10,000 patients and the GFRs were between 15 and 60 going on. And they wanted to make sure that all of these guys, of course, had their mag levels checked. So they had three sort of categories. The first category was their mag was less than 1.7. Next category was 1.7 to 2.6. And the third category was greater than 2.6. And what they found was that if you went less than 1.7, higher mortality. If you went greater than 2.6, higher mortality. But if you were in that sweet spot of 1.7 to 2.6, you had the lowest mortality. So why should you care about this particular study going on? Because what it tells us is that if you're low in mag, then the answer is, you should get supplementation going on. Now, we prefer that your supplementation comes in the form of food, and that's for everything going on. But there are people where the absorption, they can't eat enough to be able to get the mag levels up. And in those cases, we need to go ahead and supplement. Now, for supplementation, there's many different types of magnesium out there. Generally speaking, a lot of patients end up taking mag citrate. But remember, if you take mag citrate, mag uh, oxide, mag hydroxide, the higher the doses of that is going on, the more likely you are also to have GI issues going on. Now, if your kidney function is good, meaning you're not at CKD3, you're at CKD1 or 2 going on, or you you're blessed and you don't have any kidney disease at all, your GFR is greater than 60. There are several types of magnesium uh, formation that are available. For example, when we talk about mag in terms of our overall ability to sleep, so one of the biggest risk factors for having worsening kidney disease is lack of sleep. 
Why? Because lack of sleep will increase inflammation. It will actually increase your appetite. There are some really well-designed studies that I've presented before that show that if you sleep less than six hours a night, the next day, on average, you eat more than 300 calories without even knowing it. So sleep is really important. Mag glycinate. So glycine, for example, is one of those supplements that can help you sleep. Mag glycinate is interesting because one, it does absorb really well, but two, is the combination of that, if you take it in the evening about an hour before your sleep, will help you to relax. You know, there's no real substance that actually makes you fall asleep. We can put you in a coma, but the, the definition of sleep is to have these cycles of REM sleep and coming out. So mag glycinate is very interesting. Another one is mag threonate. And what's interesting about mag threonate is it crosses the blood brain barrier really well. So some of the data is, is CKD patients always have poor cognition. So things like turmeric, for example, is very interesting in terms of the data on cognition going on. And it's something that if you're able to take as long as you're not a transplant patient, but if you take turmeric, it's very interesting. Mag is another thing, especially mag threonate when it comes to cognition going on. So the bottom line between mag supplements and what you want to take away from today's topic is there's a sweet spot. So you can't just go crazy with mag. You do want to talk to your doctor so we can check a blood test and see where is your magnesium level. If your magnesium level is good, what's good? It's that sweet spot, at least in this study, between 1.7 to 2.6 milligrams per deciliter. If you're in that sweet spot, you don't need any more mag. If you're not and food isn't cutting it, then a mag supplement may be a way to go. And there are lots of mag supplements out there that you can take. Always try to get mag supplements that are a high quality brand. Don't skimp a few cents here because you want to make sure they're independently tested. You want to make sure the company is viable and it is a high quality company. How often should someone with kidney disease have their blood magnesium levels checked? Whether their so, levels are you know, low, good, high? What I do in my cl clinical practice without having any formal guidance is, you know, usually my patients come and see me every three to six months. And when they come, I check all of their electrolytes, their A1Cs, et cetera. And with that, I always check their MAG. And I do that because once again, for me, I always focus on that sweet spot of somewhere between the upper ones and the low twos going on. Mm -hmm. Because for me, the big concern I have is the calcification aspect. And okay. the beauty of magnesium is exactly that, is that it can bind to phosphorus, right? We talk about all sorts of binders and everything, but we forget mag will bind to phosphorus. So it's a great way of reducing phosphorus. It's a great mm -hmm. way of reducing calcification in your blood vessels through magnesium, in addition to things like vitamin K2. Got it. Thank you.